how do you actually register your trademark? If you're following along, it's, it's on the, the guide. It's, this is the registration. The trademark must also be registered with the USPTO. So we just talked about that. You're registering your trademarks with the United States um, US, USPTO, the Patent and Trademark Office, um, in many of the several classes of goods and services to which a trademark can attach. So what does that mean? So I've actually went in and I registered a trademark. This hoodie that I have on right here, um, I is called Everyone Moves to Atlanta, right? I grew up in Atlanta and I see now everyone is moving to Atlanta. So I said, let me just try to trademark a brand to see, you know, if it actually works and it works. But what happens is when you go in and you do a registration for a trademark, the goods are classified like one, two, three, four, five, and it's 40, it's, you know, a lot of classes. And these classes are just based on what type of goods they are, for example. So like, say, for example, you want to register like hoodies, shirts, hats, all of those things are in certain classes. So it say it might be class, you know, 41 or something like that. You would, you, you would basically put that class number in when you're doing your registrations and it'll just group all of these classes and that what that'll do is it'll it'll give you the registration in this particular class of goods. So you will go in if you're doing if you're doing hoodies, you'll just go in and find that particular class, register in that. Or say you're doing cups, that's another class. Say you're doing, um, you know, there's there's places where you register your trademark, like Chance did for your music, you know, for digital distribution platforms, um, for your DSPs, for um, places that actually put out your music. There, there are classes for when you register your name for concert, for promotions and things like that. So that's what you do. But the main thing is to register your trademark. That's something that you find and you go to the United States Patent and, Trade, Trade, uh, Patent and Trademark Office and you register there. And that's where you get those protections, right? So I think a, a very, very important thing is, and I always wanna make this clear, is this is something that you have to study up on, you have to do your research on. And if possible, it's always good to, if you don't understand what you're doing, consult an attorney, right? I did it because I feel like I'm an attorney and I'm gonna tell you, even me as an attorney, right? I tried to do one on a name that I used to use as my artist name, which 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 won't, uh, you know, we won't mention. It got rejected, you know why? Because I didn't follow the proper protocol. However, the brand got, the brand was able to get registered. Um, and when I registered the brand, I ended up having to do it again. So initially you have two options to register the trademarks, right? It's two, there's two options. You have option one. This is kind of technical, but just follow along. It will, it's in your handout, just follow me. The TAS plus, that's $250 per class of goods or services. This is the least expensive, ex expensive option by far, but covers several additional requirements. Notably, you have to accurately select your goods, communicate through your email, which is fine, and provide additional information on your form. What does all that mean? What is a TAS plus? Basically, what that means is there are two ways to file your trademark. You can do TAS plus or TAS standard. The TAS standard, that's your $350 per class, um, and you have to communicate via email and online, but you don't want to, you don't know what goods you're actually filing. So with your TAS plus application, which is $250, you know, I'm finna file this on some hoodies. I know I'm finna, and everything that kind of relates to hoodies, whether it be pants, hoodies, hats, sleepwear, I'm filing the, the trademark um, so it can go on hoodies. I could do a TAS plus, or you can say TAS standard. I don't know what I'm going to file it on, but this is a little bit more expensive. Um, but what I will say is, when you're filing these things, right, it's 250 for the TS plus. Last time I checked, it's 350 for the TSA stand, T T S T E A S standard. The reason why I'm telling you this is with trademarks, when you file something and you file it incorrectly and they reject it, when you resend your application in, you have to pay that 250 again. You have to pay that 350 again. So if you get in there and you feel like I don't know what I'm doing, you have to look like you have to think about, let me go and find somebody or an attorney or expert because there are a lot of people. And what happened to me is, um, um, I agree, Bufo. What happened, what happened to me is I filed it, my first trademark improperly. It got rejected and I had to resend it. So had to pay again. 
what happens is a lot of these attorneys, there are a lot of trademark attorneys that I guess they just watch and see which ones get rejected. And a bunch of them be in your email. Hey, I can refile this, do it properly for this amount of money. So I would suggest to you, you know, because uh, even I had trouble doing it, finding someone, you know, you get your logo, you have the thing that everyone knows you by, you have your name and you want to make sure that you're protected. Find you an attorney or find you somebody um, that specializes in that area that'll help you do um, your trademark stuff. So we have a good question. What kind of attorney specializes in this kind of work, registering this type of stuff? So what I would do is I would go on Google.com. This is very simple. Go on Google.com and type in trademark attorneys in my ear, right? And, you know, as an artist, um, as a producer, as a, as a brand, one of my biggest advice, and this is something that I do um, when I'm doing anything, if you were going to a job and they were hiring you, you interview them, right? You would interview somebody and say, they'll, they'll interview, how long have you worked? What have you been successful with? What are you going to charge me? You know, how, how much, you have to learn how to do the same exact thing, um, you know, when you're hiring an attorney. So for example, if you want to get you, find your trademark attorney, see which one, see, see, call them up and say, hey, can I speak with you? And talk to them, hey man, I got this brand, I'm a producer. My name is Bufo on the Beat. I know that no one else has this name. No one else spells it this way. I want to get this protected. How much would you charge me? How, what's your success rate? How long will it take me to turn around? Okay, I got all that information. Could you send it to me in an email so I'll have it? Boom. Then next thing you do, you go to another attorney that's in that area. Hey man, same exact thing. You go to another one. You, you say, hey man, same exact thing. And then you go to a last one. Hey man, same exact thing. You lay all the information out and you say, okay, I like this one, but they're a little bit too expensive. This guy has a high success rate. He's a little bit more expensive, but this this lady right here, great success rate, not that expensive, very personable, and I know she seems like she'll be willing to help me, and she works with you know people in the entertainment industry, mainly producers. So that's what you're doing when you're trying to figure out how to register 